Hello, and welcome to Talking Simulator. I am Cameron. I I'm Corey. And today we are going to continue playing Dicego Elysium. L E E L Y L E L E C U M. Sai. Um. Or is it is it Japanese? D is or Ko A L E C U M. Maybe it's maybe it's Spanish. Disco L. Elysium. 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 The L means the, right? L. Yeah, L. Yeah. L. Isium. L. Yes. Isium. The Isium. The uh, Isium. Hi. <laughs> How's it going out there, Internet? It's fun because in my playthroughs, I never ran across them calling the world Elysium. Really? I didn't, I didn't actually finish the, the reality check with Joyce. Oh, I wow. Didn't, I didn't pass that. So, we are ahead of me. This game has so many different ways. It does. Ways, like... It's so many ways. It has so many ways. This might have the most ways. Some of the most ways. Some of the most ways. Several ways. Like, I keep going back to, like, the people that designed it saying, like, it's about the size of... Uh, Planescape Torment and me being like, no, and then me being like, well, if there's like 24 characters for the stats, but... Hmm. Yeah. I'm still not sure. I don't, I don't have a real answer. I'm, I'm happy to hear that they compared it to Planescape Torment because that's the comparison that I immediately yes. left to. And it's, it's listed in their list of like, inspirations. Ooh. Well. I'm glad I didn't read those, because otherwise I'd be plagiarizing. Ha! Huh. All right, so day we... Three, day three, day Had we three. gone to sleep We yet? did! Okay. I made us go to sleep! Ah. <laughs> uh, All right. And then we hauled our carcass out of bed. Yep. See, it says in the corner. Day, day three. three. Yep. Right beside Cameron's shoulder. Man, we should bathe. I think we should go explore. Mm. We it's, haven't bathed in like at least a week. A bright new world. Ooh, ooh. Very important. Yeah. Ooh, ah, ooh. Well, let's just go downstairs. <laughs> pick up Kim. Yeah. P pick up our babysitter. <laughs> Our, our husband, Kim Kitsuragi. Ooh. Hey. Who are these fellows? They have police badges. I bet they're the real police. Oh, God. Hey, Kim. Yes? Sorry, you Kim. You want to ask him about himself? Yes? Hey, you. I don't see how... And my life is pertinent to the investigation. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, Lieutenant. What do you want to know? You're a Beano Clard. Yeah. Tell me a secret you about yourself. No. <laughs> Tell me a secret about yourself. <laughs> I've absolutely had those conversations. Your eyebrow... The eyebrow's exercising psionic control over you. What's happening to me? Something... something's the matter, detective. <laughs> oh my god! Authority failure. Legendary authority failure. That's me, really. What a big mood. We're not even wearing the anti-authority shirt! <laughs> you wear glasses. That's correct. That makes him a Beano Clard. <laughs> Completely uncut material, if you say so yourself. I'm not gonna call him a... Glasses are cool, Kim! They make you look smart. That's all for now. Who, who are these two? Well, there's the horse-faced woman. Huh. 
Oh, the wince. As Lieutenant Kitsuragi explained to patrol officers the lowest rank in the RCM, below Lieutenant and Sergeant. Are you the cavalry? I'm definitely not the cavalry. Why don't you I want don't to talk know. to me? I mean, why would I want to talk to you? Let's just do this by why the book, okay? What precinct are you from? God, he's no. It's a look, isn't it? That's a hell of a wig. <laughs> That's a hell of a wig. Fucking deranged lunatic. The sunglass wearing man pushes through his teeth. All right, goodbye. You look like shit. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. You look like shit, asshole. Wow. You seem stable and in control. Allow me to say, alcohol really seems to have had a positive effect on you. Now, what do you want? definitely know you from somewhere <laughs> another life from where from another life yes from another life a different life maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the to what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality shit what station are we from the 41st right that's kim's though wait are we from the 41st or the 57th it's like you're really the detective in this instant <laughs> We're the 69th. Yeah, we are the 41st. Yeah. Okay, okay. Man sounds genuinely excited. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we are getting somewhere. Gives you a long, meaningful look and adds, somewhere good. Kim, who is this guy? <laughs> Let's talk more about that hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Oh, the hypothetical 41, yes. Let's fantasize about that. He blinks aggressively. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. What would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for an experiment? Kim's cooler than you. I'm sure he's fucking flattered, but Kim is not part of this thought experiment. In this one, we are partners. Thank you, Planeswalk Go-Go. Hmm. Got a compliment about this <gasps> Dice Friends. Oh, it hasn't, it's barely even started I yet. I know. It's, I, it's a it's a fresh clean baby. None of none of the players have babies yet. None of us have babies yet. I I was once shown a picture of an actual adult bot fly. They look like chibi bees. They're they're black and yellow and stripy and they've got big eyes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can just imagine one going like, "You hold baby, okay?" And you're like, "I'd prefer not to hold the baby." And it's like, "Okay, bye. Thank you for holding baby." <laughs> Oh yeah, you seem like a cool guy. I'd love to have you as my partner. Would you now? Or would I be cramping your style? The man bites his lip and waves his hand. Never mind, partner. Uh, hmm. Okay, actually, yeah, you probably would cramp my style. No, not you. Okay, how about you stop wasting my time and get on with whatever you were doing then? Who else is in our imaginary police station? 
You're not going to believe this, but... Man pauses for dramatic effect. Police officers! Yes, sir, solving crimes, locking up the bad guys, and... Get this, and not getting their drink on at 2 o'clock. Just some regular boring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far-out son of Lung. Who is the far-out son of Lung? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. He winks at you sarcastically. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Want to tell me more about him or her? Not even a little bit. It's an urban myth, the lieutenant says softly, about an officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. As I said, just an urban myth. You're not the son of Long. He's trying to protect you from further rough handling dashed out by this sunglassed man. Okay, yeah, you get the joke. Leave it at that. Do you have a crime to solve? Oh, no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. Let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing you work. This isn't helping, she says, shaking her head and looking at the man with sunglasses disapprovingly. Hmm. Well, weird. I can't imagine it anymore. Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. His gray eyes suddenly flash above the glass frames. They feel sad. It's a mere second, but it feels like you saw something. A gram of compassion in this sadness. Okay, see you around. Kim, who is this guy? Uh -huh. I'm not getting involved in this. It's not my style, he thinks, glancing at the man in sunglasses and the woman beside him. Ooh, boy, they're mad at him. No wonder, he just doesn't recognize them. I've got some questions for you. I'm a cop. About what? You don't look like a cop. He inspects you. You know what you look like? I don't know. Why don't you tell me what I look like? I don't know. He taps his forehead, thinking, a sad stack of shit next to someone far more proficient. Okay. Now, will you answer some questions for me? No. He says calmly, then just keeps staring at you. Why not? Because it's not my job. Why don't you go and fucking do yours and solve this damn hanging? If you don't want to answer my questions, maybe you want to hear me say things. Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. Come on, Jean. Okay, say things. He adopts a lighter tone. I want to hear you say things. Hear that? He wants you to say things. Say one. Reactions being easy. Hmm. Suddenly out of nowhere, case-related things start popping up in your head. Okay, I'm doing this investigation. Man is hanged. So, do you know who hanged him? Why am I even telling you this? I don't know. Why are you? Gives you an odd look. Who knows why you do the things we why we do the things we do? Somehow bouncing those ideas off the man with sunglasses felt calming, like you've done it before. Oh my god, there's more. He looks at you in disbelief. You want something more. What is it? Let's talk about the hanged man again. Okay, why not? Let's do the whole thing over. We're not wasting time. There is no time. Okay, so this person who was shot and was hanged. You think he was hanged as a cover-up? To hide the shooting? Yes. Okay, well, corrects his blonde wig. <laughs> his hair. He corrects his hair. Don't know. Well, see you around. Watch out for yourself, loser. That voice, so very familiar. Did you hear it when calling to your station and reporting your badge missing? Hey, your voice, I recognize it. Oh, really? I wonder where. I call. I lost my badge recently. When I called in to report it missing, you were there. That's... That's the where you remember me from? <clears throat> I have a bit of memory trouble. You don't say. It turns away from me. Goodbye then, the voice thing was a coincidence. Run along, asshole. Ooh. Esprit de corps. Okay, the man with the sunglasses in his hypothetical station 41. Weird, right? I know, super weird. 
There's something we're missing here. Something you can't put your finger on. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy and you'll probably get laughed at, but still. I was thinking the same thing. I should ask him if we're from the same station. Yeah, <laughs> just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. Again, I can't believe this shit. Look, I just have to ask, are we from the same police station? I'm going to say no, just to see what you'll say to that. What do you say? Yeah, probably not. I don't remember you from anywhere. God fucking shit. Pinches the root of his nose. None of this is great news for him. Okay, I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind, not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. All right, goodbye. <laughs> Peace out. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. Can I hear more about cryptids? What's the most dangerous cryptid? Oh, is... Hmm. Yeah. Lieutenant leans in. Hey, you promised you'd only ask her about one cryptid. Oh, but Kim, don't you want to hear about another cryptid too? <laughs> Lieutenant pauses thoughtfully. Oh, Kim. Come on, Kim. Do I see elves tugging at the corner of your mouth? <laughs> Something in him breaks. <laughs> ah, fuck it. Let's have more cryptids. Oh, uh, war story. Is yes, it... I was reported by soldiers in South Strafe. Saffron during the war, the kind green ape would have visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. Wow. With its saliva? Yes, it has amazing healing qualities. Some soldiers reported growing back limbs, regaining their sight. And there was something about an undiscovered subspecies of man? Indeed, there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptids. Same taxonomic family, different genus. Which is to say the kind, kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor and that evolved parallel to our own, just like your partners. <laughs> oh no, I didn't mean to imply that the lights are inferior to us in many ways. <laughs> you are superior. For example, your earwax doesn't have a foul odor like ours does. A tremendous evolutionary advantage, I'm sure, but perhaps you've had enough speculative biology for one day. Yeah, goodbye! <laughs> That's all for now. Thank you, man. Wow, just stepped right into that, eh? <laughs> Wait, do we have... Can no. we currently... Do we don't have a white check? We don't. Well, we've got the logic impossible check. Ugh. Maybe if we have a beer, we can be more logical. Uh, it's smoking. Smoking? Smoking makes us smarter. Right. That is true. I think one of our shirts, the white shirt... Great. That's conceptualization. Are we wearing our logic shirt? I believe we are wearing our logic shirt. <sighs> All right, soldier. you again what is it all right 100 percent a sudden flash of lightning in your neocortex the hostile cafeteria is lit by its eerie blaze floor plans bullet trajectories webs of human emotion all channeled into a single thought why are you so sure robbie ruby didn't off him so that's what you're what you're squinting at he looks at you you're trying to come up with a theory weren't you that she did it yeah, he was cobbling together shit so he could put her away. It's RCM 101. Well, let old Titus set your mind at ease then. She didn't do it. She was here all night. The lieutenant opens his notes. Sunday night, 11.30 to 12.15. She was here all that time. Yeah, with us drinking near the stage there, he points to the karaoke stage. 
She didn't go out for fresh air for one smoke. Go to the toilet, to the bar. In the whole 45 minute window, she was with you all the time. All right, maybe she took a fucking leak, okay? For one moment, maybe she went out too. She has a complex operation to run from her lorry. He points to the intersection. She's a busy girl, always has been. Could this complex operation be the one Joyce asked you to look into? Probably, though they'll never open up about it. You'll have to keep investigating. Just because she was gone for five minutes doesn't mean she magically got to the roof and shot the merc. He taps on his temple. I've been through this. It's not possible. All right, we're in. We got Ruby unaccounted for some time during the window. This was crucial. Now let's place her on that roof. You got, you got his attention now. Don't ruin it by making weird claims. Remember, you can still mess this up. Number three. Yeah. Uh, how? how? <laughs> Through what looks like an abandoned pinball workshop. <clears throat> People say there was a pinball arcade here, too, sometime before the hostel. What was it called, Th Theo? East Delta Pinball Arcade, the old man coughs. Weird place, went bankrupt. Okay, but the man looks around. How'd you get up? There's no room for a staircase in this building, or an elevator for that matter. The elevator is outside the building. It's an old dumbwaiter used for moving pinball machines up and down from the workshop. Good one, Kim. <laughs> from there, a door leads straight to the roof. You can just step outside. Ruby could have gone up, shot him, come down, all under seven minutes. That's quite the theory, turns to Eugene. We need, to, we need to have a look at that secret passage, boys. I'm on it, boss. Right when the law clears, me and Angus are going up there. It's a dumb waiter, not an industrial lift. How about I go instead of... Shush now, he turns to you. You got something else to back this route up, or is that it? Have we firmly established Ruby could have done, had access to the roof where the man was shot? Firmly, shakes his head. Firmly doesn't go well with could have. There's a route to the roof. Me and the boys need to check it out. That's what we've established. But a route, he forms a gun with his hand, does not put a bullet in his head. A gun does that, and Ruby doesn't carry one. Phase two, murder weapon. Get a gun in her hand. If not that, then at least the shadow of a doubt in the shape of a gun. Mm. <laughs> Maybe she bought my gun after the murder. <laughs> Guys, this is Ravishal. Anyone can get a gun around here. Anyone. I mean, that's... Like, this is Ravishal. It is Ravishal, and also we found... We found this gun. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It looks antique. A Bell McGrath takes a look at the gun, inspects it, and hands it back to you. It's inoperable. Where'd you get it? There's a cellar under the bookshelf. It was hidden there with others just like it. Twenty, maybe thirty rifles, Titus, also broken. But still, there were too many, and there must be other caches, too. God damn it, we need to close that dump down for good. Okay, I see your point. There are guns lying around, he shakes his head. Damn it, I thought we'd found all the old spots. Why was that still there? We just missed one. Ruby doesn't know this place, boss. Just these cops digging up shit. I didn't say I'd prove she had the murder weapon, just that we need to find her. Yeah, move along. All right, cop. No, let's keep talking. I'll tell you when I've had enough. T, we're not seriously considering it, are we? He almost gets up from the seat. Ruby wouldn't do this. Why would she do something like this? Phase three, motive. Ha -ha -ha. Last component. <laughs> the big one. Get this and they'll give her to you. Remember, don't piss them off. That never works. It's not why did she kill him, it's why did she organize the cover-up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I suppose you have a theory on that. She could have just been covering up for herself, Titus. Think about it. Why go through all that effort? It was her idea, wasn't it? The hanging? You went along, but she suggested it. The little man squints, eyes beady. She had, like, a fully formed plan and shit, right when she came back downstairs. Really, Shanks? Class, you wanted to talk to another girl, that's all. She was just the first one up there. I could have come up with that plan if I'd been first. Time for a logics demonstration. Shanky. Yeah, Shanky's shaking. Shanky, yeah. 
I didn't do it, fucker. It wasn't my plan. You probably did, though. It's just a thought experiment. Think, Shanky. You killed him. You got up there, shot him, got down. Would you prefer to go on trial with your buddies as part of a lynch mob, or alone for committing murder? Fuck you, man. I would never fuck my guys over like that, he squeaks with indignation. She didn't either. She would never do that, the blonde man looks around. Why aren't more of you defending her? This is fucking stupid, Titus. Glenn, Titus looks for him. I thought the same thing when she skipped town and left us in this shit. Oh. So he didn't rule her out completely. And she skipped town. This is good. Titus, you have to see it. Things don't add up. We need to talk to her. He looks around the room. The old man in the corner nods. A very small nod and a trickle of tobacco spit on his lip. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. He puts his beer down. There's one thing I've been wondering about. Ever since you asked me where she is, add to your list of suspicions if you want. I don't know, he smiles with a, with a peculiar smile. I don't know where she went. She just up and left. Got real scared, too. Wouldn't tell me where, however hard I asked. Want to know why? Yeah. She's afraid I would tell you. He looks straight in the eye. Maybe she was right. By now, I probably would. She knew there's evidence on her, and she knew we'd find it. This is typical suspect behavior. Why fleeing is always incriminatory. Perhaps. He looks out the window again. Ask her if you find her. It won't be easy, though. She made sure of that. Have you looked for her? A little. On the coast. Where have you looked f Where have you looked for her, more precisely? More precisely? On the coast, past the water lock, he nods southwest. She's not here, so I'm thinking she's there. Do you have any clues on where she went? She's not far, we know that much. She didn't take her lorry, so she's on foot. Good fucking luck, man. She knows this place like the back of her hand. You'll never find her. Yeah, Al gives a sharp look. And we won't either. She's not really a... The man stares into his beer. Hardy candidate anymore, is she? She's not, Glenn. Can you tell me where on the coast I should start looking? Sure, there's some shit houses there. Cinder block town. The fisher folk there, they refuse to unionize, so that's one place we haven't looked. I hear they have a shack where junkies sometimes crash. Time for you to step up. We will start there. The lieutenant takes a quick note. One more question. What does Ruby look like? Boyish. Hair's dyed. Hair's red. Dyed. She looks like a lorry man. It's not much, but it'll do. Go. Oh. It'll have to. He puts his hand out. Bros, 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 bros. His grip is firm and reassuring, like holding a piece of unpolished granite. Not just granite, tightly packed RCM sergeant material. Just think it. Just think it. <laughs> you don't have to say everything out loud, chat. This is a lesson for you. You don't have to say everything out loud, especially when an enormous man who hates cops is shaking your hand. You don't tell him he'd make a good cop. Life lessons. No. He already is a sergeant. That's just what you're feeling. He just wasn't sure what you are. Yeah. Bros, bros, bros. I'm taking off the extremely racist stat. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now we're styling. Yeah. I really want to know what plus one to indirect modes of taxation means. It's one of the thoughts you can get. I guess so, yeah. But I don't know what checks it's a, are involved, right? Yeah. Ooh, we've got two skill points. <gasps> do you want do you want a thought like, of the the sum available or? Ooh. Ooh. I still want to see what extreme inland empire gets you. Yeah. Like it's at seven, but what if it was at ten? Let's wait. Let's wait. Okay. Let's wait. Hold on to them. Let's wait. Let's wait. Hold on to baby. We'll wait. All right. You're pregnant with potential. Oranya is pronounced Oranya. Klasia is pronounced Klasia. 
Class, yeah. Class, yeah. We got to go down the road and roundy round. I wonder where her lorry is. Which one is her lorry? It's the green one at the very bottom. Oh, okay. I don't know if we can interact with it. Not that one. Oh, okay. It's by the pail driver. Oh, okay. Okay, that, yes. In that section. You have to get past the statue and blah, blah, blah. Hey, guys, what's up? Did you fix my bridge? Push the button. A rusting control panel with loose wires dangling out from the hole where an indicator light used to be and a mechanical lever sitting in the middle. And pull the lever up. You grab the handle and pull the lever up. As soon as the metal connects against the contact pins, you hear a loud clunk. Then the water lock, lock starts moving. Hoggers! All right, Lieutenant looks across the canal. We can go to the coast now. Expect rugged terrain and drunks. And if you want to forge that document for Everard, now you can. Thanks, Kim, for the reminder. Kim's got your back. <gasps> Thingy. Orbs. 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 More orbs. Orbs, mm. orbs mean prizes. Oh, money. Money. There's little money dots on the ground. Oh, there is. There is. Oh, Thank God. you. Good oh, eyes. God. Good eyes. Good eyes. Just missed all that free cash. Ah, 50 cents. Money in the bank. Money in the bank. Money, money. What have we got here? Ooh, drugs. Magnesium. That's right. We're on the mag. Do you know what that? The orb? Oh, oh yes, the other orb. I I thought we might be walking through here. Hmm. No. No entry. Someone scribbled an inverted star on it. Satanists, Kim. They worship the morning star. Breaker box to power the radio pylon above you. Maybe there's something inside. <gasps> Ahead, decades old concrete defenses. Children play on them now. No, oh, it's like that Warhammer 40k fan art. 90 cents. 90 there were 90 cents. There was there were coins in the breaker box. <laughs> you should take one and get blown 30 <laughs> feet backwards. <laughs> Creaking ahead, a broken axle grinding. Oh, it's the car! It crashed! It crashed! There's a boat tucked away underneath the tarpaulin cover. Great news, the boat is big enough for a grown man like you to fit underneath in a supine position. <laughs> I've never had this! <laughs> Do you want to just tell Kim or not? You don't have to say everything out loud, chat. You don't have to say everything out loud, chat. I think this would hurt Kim. I think this would cause Kim physical pain. <laughs> hmm. We just apologize after. I don't know. Sleeping? What do people do under boats? This is merely a measurement from your visual cortex. Do with it what you want. Hobo cop. Hobo, Hobo cop. cop. Huh? <laughs> Dry, weatherproof, and free of charge. <laughs> I'm gonna live under a boat now. 
Sarcastic self-pity is not what we need at this moment, officer. I understand the situation looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. Think of it as a salvation. You have a home somewhere, all cops do. When this is done, you can return. What a fun place. Cold breeze is enough to make the wall planks creak. <gasps> Bowtie! Er, McGur no, but we'd have to remove. No, but it improves our drama. It's better than the thing we have. But Inland Empire. It's true. We'll have no horrible conversations with Bowtie. Theater kid. <laughs> Five minutes, just just for five minutes. Whoa. Oh no, wait. Track pants. Oh. Then we can go to the Warhammer store with our trench coat, <laughs> our jogging pants, <laughs> and our bow tie. We are and fully, our flip-up glasses. We are fully prepared to play Warhammer. All we need is a little lunch. <gasps> or just like a ham. A ham. Just just a just a fistful of meat. And then maybe like a brick of cheese, and then we alternate. Yeah, yeah, balanced, balanced diet. We're trying to cut out carbs. Disco ass blazer. I can't get rid of horrific necktie. Yeah. I can't do it. I can't do it. I mean, Kim will always be with us, but it's good to have several conversation options. Hmm. See a dark red chair in the dim light of the room. I believe there were also loose cans back there. Well, when we need money, we can come back. Hmm. They lead away from the accident. Very confused or drunk out of his mind. A frozen jerry can? Yeah. Free gas! Banged up motor carriage life's half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insulindian Ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and engine remain visible. It must be cold and lonely down there in the icy water. That rebel who jumped the canal and broke the water lock, this is their doing! No, the lieutenant looks at the carriage and then at you. Not so daring at all. Let's investigate. I agree, the lieutenant replies with a curious look in his eyes. We should definitely investigate. You get a sudden sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look in at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. Why the doom and gloom? It's just a sunken motor carriage. Some motor carriages are bound to end up in the sea. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. The logo is too deep in the murky water. You can't make it out, but you do see a monkfish float by. How long has it been here? The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. He leans forward to peek into the cold water. My guess is that it's been here since last Saturday or Sunday. 
the estimate is correct. The incident probably occurred on Sunday evening. Hmm. Looks like it came to an abrupt end here. Your mocking tone finds no response but the notion of the waves. Did you say something, Lieutenant? I did not. He gives you a blank stare. But I'd say it has been here since last Saturday or Sunday. Well, what should we do? Let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. Great idea. Then we can get things in get things inside. The joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns? Papers? Maybe a cool jacket? A joyrider jacket? A joyrider jacket. You feel a strange connection to this joyrider. Maybe he's from some kind of joyrider's district and likes blue and white racing livery. Like a cop would. How long will it take for low tide to come in? I don't know. An hour or two tops? Cool. As you sit down in the old rust, rusty playground, <laughs> the world around you becomes very silent. The hinges creak under your weight, dangerously so. Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. Can't change her outfit, can we? No. The tune on your lips forms a strange yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance, then looking straight ahead, he joins you with a higher pitched and slightly more melodic trill. Hey! Two birds on a wire whistling by the seaside, looking at the water in a sunken car. The clouds pass in the sky and the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand on a timepiece. Thirty minutes have passed. Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic for a discussion. <laughs> so, Kim, is a burrito a sandwich? Duck-sized horse or a hundred horse-sized ducks? Are great. This is all terrible. <laughs> these are. These posts are all terrible. <laughs> this is fine. So, was your dad also a. Uh, <clears throat> Beano Clyde? A nerd? So, was your dad also a. Virgin? <laughs> Good at math? <laughs> Would you rather sit on an anthill for an hour or stand in a river of leeches? Oh. Inappropriately personal. Terrible. Pointless. But funny. Well, the lieutenant rubs his chin. Historically, leeches have been used to prevent and even cure many ailments. Clouds on the horizon grow darker and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. Thirty minutes pass. I don't if think you, you should engage with any animal that puts its saliva inside of you. Ugh. Ugh. If you have to side with either the strikers or the shipping company, who would you choose? Luckily, I am already a member of an independent organization and therefore do not have to choose between a rock and a hard place. But if someone put a gun to your head... Is that a number on the side? Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? District something? Precinct? Something municipal? Oh, God, no. I'm sorry, Harry. I'm so sorry. 41. Precinct 41. A massive pit opens up in your stomach and the most terrible feeling comes over you. No, just no. Say no to this, Harry. I drove my car into the sea? <laughs> I'm afraid, yes. It looks like you drove your police motor carriage into the sea after you jumped across the canal. The badge, the gun, and now this. 
The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. There's also a fourth thing you've lost. A four fourth thing? More precious than the gun, the badge, and the motor carriage combined, lost forever into the deepest of seas. It's okay. <laughs> it's probably fine. We were just whistling. Everything was fine. <laughs> you can still whistle. Lieutenant says with a smile. Besides, the night is always darkest before the dawn. At least we have a pretty good suspect. If we found your motor carriage in the sea, maybe we'll find her too. Something about his notion gives you strength. Makes you realize this isn't the end of the road yet. Alright. 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 Well, we can at least see what's in there now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Let's go take a look. Go to your inventory and interact with the item by clicking the interact tab and then interact. Amazing. Uh, back of the car. I don't think there's actually mm. anything for us to interact with. I don't know why we get that tutorial message. That is strange. RCM badge Dubois. RCM commander's jacket. Got that racing jacket all along. This thick blue piece of acrylic covering a thin leaf of paper with the officer's name and rank on it. Next to the writing, you see a man stare back at you, a younger version of you already disintegrating inside, but still presentable on the outside. A police badge on which you see the photo of a man. Some seaweed is stuck to the back. Found my badge! At least something good came out of all of this. Lieutenant glances at the badge in your hands. Study badge! Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the street get grid of Revishal West. You see a photo, a name, a rank, a document number, the date of issue, and in the lower right corner, your precinct. Look at the photo. The man keeps winking at you with his green-gray eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that. But the badge is new. You used an old photo for a new badge. Good choice. A newer photo would look different. How old? Eight, maybe ten years, the guy in the picture is rather good looking, and he's got a nice haircut, which is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. And he's winking. Why? Why do you think? His face is already contorted by the expression, although it looks less grotesque on him than, than, than it does on you now. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it, and a shining watermark. Harrier Dubois. Harrier. That's long for Ari. So you are Ari thinks. Everard was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him you're Harry Dubois didn't. Strange. What kind of name is Harrier? It's a wartime name. Revolutionary. Kind of mothers give their the kind mothers give their sons during troubled times, like Undying or Boxer, Ironhide. A name like Armor. Harrier Dubois it is then. Please to make your acquaintance, Harrier Dubois. He's not going to call you Harrier. He'll keep calling you officer when he's angry with you and detective when he's not. Oh, that explains it. <laughs> the badge in your hand shines to rotate it. Rank LTN2JFR. Lieutenant Double Yefreiter. What is Lieutenant Double Yefreiter? Lieutenant is a rank above sergeant and below captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a lieutenant, and double Yefreitor. The title of Yefreitor is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank, in your case, Captain, Lieutenant explains. You have declined twice, thus you are double Yefreitor. Declined? There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precinct, precincts de comptage might be taken, or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes, he continues, they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank, in your case, Lieutenant. Heavy-duty case-solving machine. What's décomptage? Décomptage is the hierarchical system employed by the Ravishal citizens' militia. It means counting down to twos. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kinks. What kinks? Kinks like satellite officers and the additional Leofreto rank I already explained. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. 
So you've been putting up with all of this bullshit because I'm your superior? No, I've been putting up with you because despite an unconventional approach, you're doing good police work. It matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea, he smiles encouragingly. And now you've even found your badge. He trusts you for now. Try not to spoil it. Serial REV12-62-05-JAM41. one two dash six two dash zero five dash J A M four one. That's just the serial number, Revishal, Shamrock, Precinct forty one with some numbers thrown in for good measure. Date of issue, seventh November fifty. Four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant W. Freitor. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. Case create a lot of edge you have to take off. The death march really gets us going. You're pretty sure you weren't doing well, but better? Probably yes. A lot can happen in four months, especially in winter. The winters are never easy on you of that, you are sure. I remember that time. The tie around your neck feels tight suddenly. That was a good time. We had good work we had a good work drink balance going. What happened, man? Pump it up. Precinct forty one? Yes, that's the designation of your precinct, 41. Like mine says 57. The 57th is a mostly industrial harbor, a lot of asphalt. The 41 is... what? It's a tough station to work in. You all have, you have all of Jamrock to cover. That district should have three precincts, but money is what it is. It's no wonder you are like you are, he thinks. But then again... But then again, a faint smile... It's a legendary district, and a hell of a station, too. It must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price, McCoy, Berdyayeva. Berdyayeva. The badge in your hand shines. Oh, put it away. Sweet. Cool. Solved the mystery. All right. All done. One of the four things we lost recovered. RCM Commander's Jacket, a black uniform jacket with RCM signatures in signature white rectangles on its right sleeve and backside. Hmm. Exceptional quality, other than some minor wear and tear. So, yeah, I think the patrol jacket just gives us, like, one esprit de corps, right? Yeah. So this is just better. Mm-hmm. And it ups our visual calculus. It does. Outstanding. What now? Ask about Ruby in the village. All right. Yeah, there's so much area to the left. Okay. Kim is so good. We don't deserve Kim. A bottle drained of its booze is frozen to the ice. This is it. The scene of the party, the fire pit, cigarettes and empty bottles, all evidence of it. Yeah. Sure looks like a lot of folks partied here. Looks like they were all here a while, judging from the bottles. The sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point like a goose ice sculpture or a chocolate fountain. <laughs> looks like we had a couple of party goers here. Looks like it. Looks like they had a great time laughing here. Lieutenant adjusts his glasses and nods. Hey, let's keep moving, Detective. Somehow he doesn't want to dwell on it. We're gonna get Kim killed, aren't we? It's up to you. Oh God, I'm gonna fail Kim. I'm going to utterly fail Kim. Kim's going to die and it's going to be my fault. If it was me, I would simply not fail Kim Kitsuragi. Ooh, there we go. Someone has broken down the fence and the barbed wire. Money! No one's been here for a long time. Rust peels off the bent iron post of the swing. The wind whistles through the skeleton in the small house behind you. There's desolation everywhere. What happened here? 
In this yard, the lieutenant looks at the small building. A flock of grey swallows takes off in the distance. He's assessing the situation. How long ago it was abandoned? Someone thought they could have a summer house in a block obscure. Or cheap. It didn't work out. They abandoned it about a decade ago. So this part of the coast is a block obscure. Practically, it is not an official term in any way, but he spreads his arms. Look around. No sewage. Broken power lines. Crime. Drunks. Life is tough in the blocks. It's no place to build a summer home. Maybe they left something useful behind. Yes, Ryu to scavenge like a post-apocalyptic scavenger who collects trash and air and magnesium blisters. He gives you a weary smile. It's not meant as nagging, just an observation. We should move. I don't think our suspect is in this particular yard. No place to hide, and besides, too close to Martinez. But there's shit around here, Kim. He knows. <laughs> just an observation. It's just saying. glory, says the graffito, to the ghosts of us. Worth. Worth. I think we have enough to buy a board game now. Oh boy. More magnesium. We're basically invincible now. We can make our own... <gasps> Found it. The smallest church in Saint Saint. The portal reel is just what you needed. The reels attach the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. You press the large button marked Commencé, and the tape starts playing. There's a small delay before the song, song starts playing. Mm. It's mega sad. Within seconds, you know, this is the one, the real shit you've been looking for. The one you trashed your room to, to that Klasia told, Klasia told you about. Perform it! A click, then silence for a bit, then the tape, tape stops spinning. I could sing this for karaoke! Of course you could sing this. You could take a sad to a whole new level with this, and you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it like a million times. And the B side of the tape contains the instrumental version. It's like the world itself is telling you to do it. Only one obstacle stands in your way. Nothing can stop me now. Garta. You have to convince Gart to let you sing karaoke in the whirling. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. <laughs> the lieutenant watches you pack up the boombox. He doesn't say anything. Yeah! We're gonna go sing British Sea Power at karaoke. Yeah! Like a winner. It's even a B-side. That's how cool we are. Actually, given, given a listen to uh, The Decline of British Sea Power, uh, it's, it's a good album. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, like it. it it's uh, early 2000s, like... Uh, yeah, it's like 2003, uh, and it's like, alternative. Yeah. Yeah. It fits in a bit with, like, um... Oh, God. Their big song was The Skin of My Yellow Country Teeth. That same era of, like... Early 2000s. I don't know. I don't know. Just for this, for the sake of the record, "The Skin of My Yellow Country Teeth" is an awesome song. I like the name. Modest Mouse. No. 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 It wasn't Modest Mouse. No, I know Modest Mouse. Yeah, very different. Yeah, everything's coming up hairy this stream. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Sounds of life in the north, a washboard scrums filth from fabric. Ah, 
Uh, Serpent77 says the uh, soundtrack for the game is on sale right now. Oh, yeah. Clap your hands, say yeah. That was it. That's the name. A makeshift fire pit with magazines for lighting. Bushes are too thick and horny to pass through. Thorny. Thorny. Sorry. The worn and beaten planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. Lieutenant looks down the street. We can sit on benches after we solve the mystery. Let's go. Why would Lieutenant Kitsuragi be gone? Because it's nighttime. Oh, yeah. It's the only possible reason that Kim could be gone. You see dust-covered linens, dried tulips on a bed. Allez... Allez-vous-en. Vous-en? Allez-vous-en. Come in. <gasps> hey! Matching pants! We found pants. They match our shirt. We're so boring. We're so boring. Like, okay, we've got... I'm gonna say karaoke is gonna be a drama it's check. It's a drama check. So we've got the silk robe. The bow tie. The bow tie. The mesh tank top. Yes, the mesh tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything else? Uh, the conical hat? Is that... Conical hat is logic. logic. Okay, you're right. It's our thinking hat. Uh, booze, I think. Booze? Booze. Booze or, or no, wait. drugs. One of the drugs, I think. Drama is a... Intellectual? Uh, really? Yeah, intellect. So ah, we need to smoke. smoke. Yeah. Take a drag. And belt out our emotions. Yeah. <gasps> hmm. These are some wonderfully regular pants. Not too tight, not too loose, moderate in every sense. You'll blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. I like regular normal things. Mm-hmm. I know you do. These inter pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call the moral intern on you like this, that's for sure. You're a little more moralist now, buddy. A little more normal, even if you didn't want to. A wetting stone, well worn and covered in rust. <gasps> money! Yeah! It's money in the bank, Kim. Money in my pocket. Yeah, ominous auto safe. Come to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. Lean forward. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. Trouble? Say the second thing, Bertrand. Show you, shows you've got style. Click, click, bang, bang. Mm, what he said, we're cops. We don't cause trouble. We take care of oh, trouble. Of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then, which you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. What kind of ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual dark tidings, Black Hound. That's you, all right, Black Hound, licking your own heels. I am an ill omen, all right. You're not. No one around here considers us an ill omen. People would have told us. Maybe we are afraid. Why? Because you're an ill omen, but you're still welcome here, as long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then, because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. 
I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park the motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone, searching for treasure. So are others. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? Let's endear ourselves to her first. Me? No, I'm just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadi. Now it's your turn, mister. Call me Harry. Why, I guess I will, Harry. I it just rolls off the tongue. I used to know a Harry. Strong lad, but dumb as a rock. What happened to him? He did too many narcotics. So he fell off his boat and split his skull on a buoy. She rubs soap off her hands. Folks who saw it say his head cracked open like a melon. Nasty, nasty. What is in this fishing village? Just us. She sounds tired. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. What do you mean? Oh. Belch. This is pretty much a non-place. She was. She grins. A gap, a blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. The place is so pornographically poor, it's not even funny. This place is pornographically poor. Who else lives in this village? Is there a way to make a little money around here? Yeah, for you? She lets out a dry chortle. No, officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks tried handing from hiding from their women and then forgot about. Who else lives in this village? Well, there's Lillian and her kids. A few new folks live in the house to the east. She nods her head across the courtyard. But they're away right now. And then there's the drunks, she sighs. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. Who? What drunks? Sooner or later, you'll see for yourself. She slowly shakes her head. Don't have to look long to find these guys. Where could someone stay around here? Stay. Most people here are trying to leave. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got free room in the shack. Her soapy thumb points to the building behind her. How much? I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. I'm not sure if it's appropriate for the RCM to accept free accommodations. The old woman shrugs. Or don't. It's your choice. No skin off my teeth. Get yourself in. Mm, but we want to go back to the whirling to you sing. Can. Oh, okay. This is just a free bed. Okay. Don't make an old woman regret regret opening her house to the police. A key appears from under her apron. She hands it to you. Well, if you're not in the hostel in the morning, no uh, nowhere to find you. He looks around and adds, "Here, in a shack." He's a little relieved you're no longer in that room. Should he? This environment encourages one thing and one thing only. Drinking. Finally, you have those Lamos of Mar Lamos of Martinez off your back, Breton. This looks like a great place to bring chicks. Oh yeah, we're gonna get down in this old lady's house. Have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around the coast? Nay, I haven't seen anyone lately. Okay, but do you know who I'm talking about? This is my little cinder block town. She nods with a wrinkled smile. I know what goes on around here. She's being evasive. She knows something. There was a murder in Martinez, he points. See, she might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. Would you now? She turns to him. I know how this world works, and it doesn't work when people tell on each other. This isn't about the Union. You know, you don't have to worry about retaliation. Ah, I should have known. She shakes her head. This is yet another Union mess. I'm not afraid of them, you know. We're not in the habit of being afraid around here. I see. You know something, but you've decided not to tell us. There's not much to tell. People come and go now. Was there something else? I see, ma'am. The lieutenant looks to you. I hope you don't mind if we look around anyway. You should look around at your shack. Maybe she's rented it out to others too. What's further down the coast? Not much, she replies and wipes her forehead. There's the abandoned church, the DeLorean Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. Why is it abandoned? 
Some things just don't fly, officer. She smiles a gap toothed smile and smells the air. Look around. We'd go to church here. They built it 300 years ago. It must have been nicer then. They don't hold services there anymore. The Ecclesiastes. No, they've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open, she frowns. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. She's not telling you all she knows. Keep her talking. What else is on down... Is on... Is on down coast. Yeah. Or... Yeah. Well, there's that music. Music from across the sea. It started a few days ago, and now it's blasting even through the nights. And now suspicious-looking people are sneaking around the church. I don't like it. Interesting. You could look into this ruckus if you have the time. Perhaps the mysterious music is somehow connected to the case. A Rusalka or a half-demonic Apsara singing. What else is on down coast? Before you get to the church, there's some ruins, an apartment complex, or some kind of electrical plant. Run down, bunch of houses empty. Of note, the old fish market up on the boardwalk, but it's closed. There's gotta be something else. What, you're one of those real estate people with big plans. If you want a development opportunity, you can check out the abandoned building over at Land's End. It used to be a supply depot, we think. Sending goods and ammo across the bay. It's jammed shut, though. We tried to get in to see if there was anything to sell or scavenge, but it's impossible. She drops a bar of soap in the bucket with a splash. And now you know everything there is to know about this coast. Want to sign a thing? Hey, what's this about? She takes the document and squints her eyes. Come now, I can't read all this scribble. Tell me what it says. Everard wants to turn part of the village into a little youth center. Ah! She lifts the paper very close to her face and studies it intently. I might be half blind, but it looks like part of the village is going to be a street. The best part. The part we need to get out of our houses. Have you asked Lillianne about this? I won't even consider signing till I know she's on board. She hands the envelope back. Where, where can I find her? She's right over there. She points towards the jetty. The dark-haired woman leaning over the railing. Oh, thank you. I'll go ask her. Goodbye! She's right there. Shall we take a break? Sure. Okay, let's take a quick break. We'll be back shortly. Goodbye. For now. My chest. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. <laughs> oh. I'm sweating so much now. <laughs>
Luckily, that'll get cut from the YouTube version. Yeah, yeah we were on another scene. <coughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, the YouTube is just gonna have us it's like, like dying. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. 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 I'm a four-year-old. This is embarrassing. Oh. I just... <sighs> I'm gonna go blow my nose. Yeah. Yeah. I'm take. Go rinse off my my face. Oh. Stretch a bit. Hmm. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. Everything is fine. Everything's fine. You need any more like snack cakes or? I think I've had quite enough snack cakes. Mm. What are these things doing in the fish? Boots! Boots! Franco-Nigerian cavalry boots. We got some cool boots now. We leveled up again. Cavalry boots? Wow, we've got three skill points. That's a lot. A view from above. Aha. Ooh. Good old calf length cavalry boots. Mount that horse and ride into the night. The heel comes in handy too. Definitely makes for some good five makes you some good five centimeters taller. But could it be that it's also making you sharper? More perceptive to your surroundings now that you've gained a new perspective? Oh, and the there was another postcard. Right? Yeah, the coal city. Uh, it's in items. Oh, okay. They're just money. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> nice. 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 She likes having the police around. Hi, a woman in a raincoat stands on the quay, considering an overturned boat, a sword in a scabbard hangs from her hip. Dope. Anything I can help you with? Oh, that depends. Yeah, I've got questions. The first is, what's your name? name? Is Lillian. People call me Nat Picker. I think I have time for questions. What are the other ones? <laughs> Ask her about the cool sword. It helps to break the ice. Nice sword. Does it come with a story? Story. Hmm. And you. Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of a story. She smiles at her own joke. So it's an intim It's to intimidate folks mostly. It is imposing. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. Why do you need intimidation tactics? Time to time, people need to lessen in respect. It's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men, and believe me, she adds, tittering, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. So where are all the men now? Some went to patch their wounds, their lessons learned. Others were more thick-headed, she looks down. One of them I ended up marrying. Where's your husband now? Gone. Gone where? To the waves. Her eyes stop in yours. The sea took him. It was a long time ago. Oh. Didn't respect the sea. Went out there drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned to two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago and I've moved on. 
There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. She really liked those muscles, though. It's in the way she pronounces sinewy. It's healthy to let go and move on. Gotta keep the wheels spinning. Sounds like us. Mm. I do like the way that past checks give you some hint as to what the best response will be. Mm. But how? Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. Crosses her arms, buried and mourned him for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. I like her earrings are fishing bobs yeah. and hooks. Glances of the village where two little kids are playing with what look like rocks. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another better drunk. Ask her, both of you could use some action. Do it. Hit on the widow. It's the right thing to do. I'm looking for someone. Maybe you can help. Let's see. Tilts her head ever so slightly. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for a suspect who might have stayed in the neighborhood. When did this person stay here? Very recently, over the past few days. She might have arrived on Friday. Oh! Looks slightly disappointed. Been out to sea for most of the past week. Weather's been good for fishing, so I usually run at four in the morning. Really? Yeah, that's the optimal time. Gotta make the most of the calm. Been sleeping like a corpse after. The sea really takes its toll. Now I'm just waiting for the wind to settle to get out there. Again. Sorry I couldn't help you out. Faint smile runs across her face. Maybe I can help you find someone else. I'm looking for a missing cryptozoologist. Ugh. She frowns thinking, I don't know. I know what these are. Care to elaborate? People who look for imaginary animals. People who look for animals who are hard to find. Aha! She exclaims, like the snowmen. Snowmen? I haven't heard about those. Two odd guys been wandering around here, nosing sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. Where did they go? Don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. She points north. What else are you looking for? Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? I'm not looking for anyone else right now. How can I assist you then, officer? I was asked to get your signature on this. Who are you? Her eyes dart back and forth on the paper. Hmm. She says, by a sign, and I agree to live in on the construction noise. What exactly is the union building? Everard's planning to turn some of the village into a youth center. What a nice idea. Wouldn't have thought that. Voice trails off. Thought what exactly? That Everard and the union have nice plans for anything. Thought they only cared about themselves. Shakes her head. Well, I guess union members have children too. Here, you can use my pen. There's a pen and everything! Takes it from you, doubtful look in her eyes, clicks it, and places the tip on the paper. Is she gonna yeet it into the ocean? Gives the document one more look, then shakes her head, signs it, hands it back to you. Here you go! Wait, why did you sign it? I shouldn't have! I mean, it's Everard, so it's probably a mistake. Probably, she smiles. But it's a youth center, and I have children. Gotta give them something else to do. They're cute and small now, but they're growing up fast. Had my first drink when I was 11, because I was so bored. Anyhow, you don't need Isabel's. You also need Isabel's signature. If, if it's a bad idea, she won't sign. You'll have to find she's a tougher nut to crack than me. Sound logic, division of labor. She leaves the skepticism to the skeptic. Well, he's seeing you. So I've been fascinated by the shadow of the person up left, like where the boat is docked. It's just like on the boat deck. And there's like little fingers that I can see like really? flapping about. Oh yeah, right here. Right there, right yeah. Here. Yeah. Look at that. I've also not seen a boat docked here. It looks like Joyce's. Yeah. Good eyes, good eyes. Oop, planks creak beneath our weight. Is it Joyce? She's got a green coat. She's always had a green coat. Yeah. No, I mean, like... I'll just keep the quarterly in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. All right. Hey, Joyce, what's up? And it's a jetty, by the way. Of course, jetty. 
I prefer a good jetty to appear any day. Jet, jet, jetty. <laughs> Hello, detectives. It's good to see you here. I only just arrived myself. What brings you here, madame? Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now. So I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. That, and she's also keeping an eye on you. Have you been spying on us? Spying has such a negative connotation. I did track your progress along the coast, however, and decided I would be better able to assist you from here. Hmm. Then there's the matter of that little scamp in old lady clothes. She threatened to paint the cordially red, like blood, you see. Well, I like it the way it is. White. So how do you like it around here? How do I like it? She, she casts her gaze around the village, slush melting on the cinder blocks. Construction work left half finished ten years ago. Water drips down the eaves of a etern of a turnite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune. The smell of salt and dog shit in the background. I know that smell. Amazing. It's pornographically poor. The street has no name. All the men are dead or missing. And. Is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull gray metal rests in her scabbard, a sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Fortunately for you, madame, the RCM is on the scene. She could easily just... Hmm. It's early spring and the rains are coming. An officer enters a low hut of stone and wood. Inside, weapons are piled against the walls. Rifles with splintering so stocks and swords. Tens, if not hundreds. Excuse me. They're antiques, says Lieutenant John, the archetype McCoy, to his partner. They're digging them up from the catacombs now, fixing them old caches from the revolution. The children carry them up. Come May, the streets will be flooded. Outside, the wind rattles the loose hatches, flooded with cheap weapons and angry hands. Hmm. This island? No, the Insulandian Isola. No, you haven't told me about how they found it. Well, your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. Fifty years ago, of, uh, fifty years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. It's a pity. Most of these people will never know what this place means, this island of matter, why they were ferried over in the first place. Remind me to tell you one day, she corrects the scarf around her neck. For now, how can I assist you in this new location? Tell me now, we have time. Do we? He glances at his watch. It doesn't look like he does. I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. Would not want to delay you. The story she will tell it only before she leaves Martinez at the very end of her stay. I found my badge, by the way. I love you did. She inspects the piece of blue plastic, her eyes scanning from left to right. She hands it back to you. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant W. Freighter you Dubois. I'm glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. Seaweed drips from the badge in your hand. It smells of fish. What can I help you with, you Lieutenant W. Freighter? How about you share your information on the lynching now that you've seen his badge? The goalposts have moved, Lieutenant. In the absence of the badge, I have informed my employer there will be a probe. I cannot rescind that promise. She smiles apologetically. To my knowledge, the drivers are still in the roundabout. I will tell you everything I know when you've finished with them. This was your plan all along. She shakes her head vigorously. My plan is to share information. The only way I to do that now is by telling my employers you've kept your end. Which I hope you will, because let me tell you, we are in dire waters. The sooner the probe is finished, the sooner I can share crucial information with you. She takes a sip of tea. Now, is there anything else I can do for you in the meantime? Tea, perhaps. Thank you, that's all for now. Ooh. 
Ooh. Bucket. What's in the barrel? What's in the barrel? Give bucket. Money. Money. You can't see into the house from this angle. I'll wait outside to give you some time and privacy to check your new living arrangement and look for any signs of Ruby. But just so you'd know, after we're done with the day, I'll still be staying in the whirling in rags for the night. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. Hello. Waves, the sea, a church. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it, adorned with the expression. It's a white check, like. Yeah, I just wondered, do we have any encyclopedia? Clothing? I don't think we do. Uh. Nope. I'm gonna put on the cavalry boots. Oh. They're very fashy. We can wear them with yod purse. There are actually a pair of like cavalry pants. Oh really? That we can, we can acquire. Hmm. Come on. No. Our face is still our face. Alright. Books about bird watching and almanac from 39. On the table you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. You'll be looking like a pansy without the chops. A fucking pansy. It's, you don't want to fail at shaving. No. <clears throat> you might not want to succeed either. Our skin has to be a ruin under our, our under our facial hair. Uh, is exposing more of it to the world? I mean, it will look more like our license, our, our badge. Yeah. As you look at the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear that one of them isn't quite level with the others. The edge of the floorboard next to it looks scratched. The hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make up the mixture of sand and sawdust below. Search through the sand and sawdust. You stick your hand and start combing through the sand, dry, not like outside, fine white dust, and then something hard wrapped in paper. What's it? A small cylindrical object. You pull it out. A bullet. Interesting. The floorboard doesn't care, but maybe the washerwoman does. You have enough to confront her with. Holding the bullet, you get the feeling this isn't ammunition against you. It's for herself. Mm. Mm. Bullet. Boulet. We should put on more uh, perception clothes. Just in case there's something else here that we're missing. I think our perception boots are it. Are they? Looks, looks to be. Looks to be. Or let's check out other things first. Like these children. Yeah. 
What could they be up to? Hey kids, have you seen a woman with dyed red hair? Girl, barely four or five years old, sits on the sofa. She's looking at you with frank curiosity. Clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Are you Lillian's daughter? Yes, I am. Little Lily. She gazes at you with her big eyes. You know my mom? Yes, we met earlier. That's nice. My mom is great. She nods. What's that? She never gets angry or anything. What's that thing you're holding? It's Lammy. He's my friend, sort of, like, holds the fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Lammy is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing and the fur is tattered in several parts. Oh, well, pleased to meet you, Lammy. Lammy usually doesn't like strangers, but you're also fuzzy like Lammy. Good thing we didn't shave. <laughs> What's that? It's a grouse, she yelps, smiling broadly. You might be able to get on Garth's good side if you replace the broken skewer you almost certainly broke. Can I have it? I know it's someone who really likes stuffed birds. Sure, just go up and get it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. Dope. We stole a child's bird. All right, you just need to grab from the ceiling and go. This is going to be fine. You want the armored gloves? Yeah. Oh, she looks alarmed. I had gloves, very big ones, heavy too. Where did you get these gloves? Found them when Lammy and I were playing hide and seek in an empty house where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. And where are the gloves now? She pouts. I hid them. The twins were going to take them. They're stupid. She lifts her stuffed toy up and looks into one of it. its one remaining eye, as though searching for confirmation. We're going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. He enunciates the last two words carefully. Oh, she doesn't seem to understand, but the lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her the important part. They're in my sand castle. She points somewhere outside. Behind our house, under the sand. You can break the castle. It's not very good. Do you know anyone named Ruby? Ruby? Suddenly the girl gets all serious and leans in as if she's about to tell you a secret. My mom tells me I'm a big girl. But she doesn't know I can't say L, or like, sometimes I can, but... Kids, the lieutenant shakes his head. Bye! Alright, this is a physical instrument check? I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was just you can take the bird. Oh, we can. Okay. Yes. Yay, present for guard. All right. What a nice child. Yeah. Let's go bust her sandcastle. Just like straight, like a cavalry boot heel coming down on a child's sandcastle. A police cavalry boot <laughs> heel coming down on a child's sandcastle. That's fucking... Yeah, that's bad. Hey, kids, what's up? The other one looks indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. You guys look identical. The stone kicking one becomes frantic all of a sudden, as if that's something to be scared of, the obvious fact that you just stated. He looks just like me, the other one says. Yeah, I said that. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws another rock. Both of their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. You're bad with kids, the lieutenant remarks with evident glee. I am, yeah. What are you, the kid master general? <laughs> Maybe I am, he grins. Now how about some actual police work? We're not getting anywhere, anything out of here. Kids, have you seen any bad people around? One of the kids looks up, his mouth slightly open. What bad people, he asks. I don't think questioning 40-year-olds without their parents' presence is going to crack the case. No, oh, all right. Bye, kids. Take care. Our tenant, 
The policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Why was there a bullet under the floorboards of your shack? God damn that girl, she murmurs softly. A bullet, the lieutenant turns to you and, and gives you a little nod, then turns to the washerwoman. You didn't put it there, did you? She did. Gone and hid things in there, she shakes her head. She's usually a good tenant and not a stupid one either. You rented the room to her? The old woman sits in silence, her hands moving into the water bucket. Some water sloshes over the edge. Slowly, she speaks, wringing out a rag. Yes, I let the room to that ruby girl. As I've done before when she's been in trouble, or just looking for solitude, I've made it clear we welcome all kinds of people here. When was this? She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. Her wrinkled hand needs a blue rag in the water. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? She seems genuinely worried about her previous tenant. She's even... She's seen her hiding out from trouble before, but this seems different. That's for the police to find out. The lieutenant takes out his familiar blue notebook. Right then, please answer each question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we have a few. You said she left on Monday. Yes, early with the dogs, around 8 o'clock, I think. Is the room exactly as she left it? I cleaned it, like I always do. Was there anything else there? No. What is she like, Ruby? She's good company, knows how to talk to an old woman. She rubs her cold hands together. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation, so I really appreciate that about her. This Ruby is an old lady whisperer. She knows how to work the village elder, unlike you. Did she talk to you much during her last stay? No, she was mostly silent this time, kept to herself. What do you mean? She tried not to let it show, but I could tell that she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cast a few lines, but this time she mostly stayed in her room. She wanted to talk to her, as they usually do, but she was brooding. Why do you think she left the bullet there? How would, how would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. She looks back to her shack, thinking. You could ask her about your hunch, that it was a desperate measure. See if she thinks Ruby fits the bill. I have a possible explanation in mind. I do tell. The seagull flies overhead. Obviously a bad omen. It's an exit plan. An exit from what? Her life. The lieutenant stops writing for a moment. He looks at you, then at the old woman. She tilts her head to the side, looking up at you, deep in thought. Then she makes up her mind. No, she's a fighter. Not a quitter, like you sometimes get, son. Hmm. Where did she go? I don't know. Further up the coast. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots, heading up north. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. After a moment of silence, she says, You'll never find her, you know. Her tone is without malice. She knows the coast like the back of our hand. You only just arrived. I wouldn't worry about that, ma'am. We're persistent. Farther up the coast we go, then. Are you sure you wouldn't rather stay here, get a nice cozy fire going in the heater? She drops a rag into the bucket. It's clean now. Seems like a better idea to me. No, you can do it. You still have plenty of juice in you before the drop. Behind the cinder block houses, old pre-war pre ruins rise. Pre-war ruins rise, like, to the sky like dark palaces, the wind calls. I've got Lillian's signature. Will you sign the papers now? Lillian should let her sword make her decisions. The girl just doesn't have the head for it. She lets out a chortle course like a raven's crow. Either way, I won't sign. So it was a test. Aye, Lillian's not the one who's too trust not the only one who's too trusting. She wanted to see if you would do it and if she would. What do you have against the Union? I've seen it all before. You'd think they've got our interests at heart. Rich men are always selling poor men promises they never plan to keep. She pulls a dark red rag out of the bucket and puts it back. Then the poor get rushed out of their homes and the rich get a little richer. That's the way it goes. So no, I don't trust the fat man and neither should you. Ah, it's really in her best. This place needs that construction project. Uh... 
What do you think I'm doing right now, Mr. Osium? The scrub brush flies into the bucket so furiously some splash hits your face. Tastes like soap, unsurprisingly. Mmm. Mmm. To have some integrity, you're an officer of the law, not some fat slug's corrupt little crony. It's okay, she's emotional right now. Okay, goodbye! If you do find her, please go easy on her. She looks around, the air is getting colder. She really means that. It's an honest plea. She's a good girl, whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. change our pants. These are gross. We didn't pull them out of the trash. It's true. They're still less, more gross than pants we found in the garbage. Find the armored gloves, take the stuffed bird to guard, ask about Ruby. Okay. All right, time to fuck up that sandcastle. There it is. Target sighted. Boot charged. Ready? Fire! Weather, and, weather has not been kind to Lily's little sandcastle. The once mighty towers are quickly eroding away. You can see something shining back to you from what must have been a vast underground catacomb network. Reach in the catacombs and pull out the shiny objects. The walls and floor give way to a giant's, the giant's greed, collapse, and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. Congratulations, that's the gauntlets down then. We're doing good on the armor collection front. Fucking dope! Sweet gloves! Oh, those Ooh. are better than the rubber gloves. Strength in digits. Clenching and unclenching your fist has never been so fun. The tiny ceramic plates make a lovely clicking sound when your fingers move. The gloves are a bit sandy, but the grip is phenomenal. Yeah. Power armor. Yeah. Cavalry boots and the iron fist. Done. Hmm. 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 So much more to explore. There is. <gasps> As you fold your fingers into a fist, you realize you could knock anyone out with one punch. The white ceramic gloves wrap around your digits comfortably. Your, per your movements cause tiny little clicks like dice rolling somewhere far away as the plates reorient to your motion. I will be responsible with this. This is just to protect me from harm, not to show off. The hardened vitreous enamel, at once sleek and light, adds a glow to your cheeks and a spring to your step. Just imagine what a full suit of this stuff could do for you. Oh yeah. This is the long sought after enemy technology. I can't just enjoy it, I must study it. Ooh. Remember, this is a highly specialized kinetic redistributor meant to stop bullets, wear it, observe its properties, see if there's a weakness in the design. For the day, you have to fight someone covered in the same material. Yeah, a thought. <gasps> Do it. Yeah. Unlock thought. Unlock thought. Hold on, what does it say? It really hurts to punch this armor. A sword wouldn't leave even a scratch. A bullet would bounce right off. Still, there must be some flaw in that would allow you to stand your ground against this dangerous enemy technology. You just have to figure out what it is, possibly by beating yourself while wearing it. Shooting yourself? Let's see. Oh, but we were almost finished with the... Oh no, but yeah, we're still... It's yeah. It's still going. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good.
Mazut? I wonder what that means. I guess we'll never find out. <laughs> Wheels and trees. This is very uh, Nabokov. The rear tire of a motor. Wow, it rolled. Look how far it got. It's not ours. Isn't it? No. Oh. <gasps> More drugs. We've got so many drugs. I think we'll just never run out of the, the healing properties of... Magnesium. Magnesium. Yeah. Orb. More morb. More orb. <laughs> morb. I got the morb sometimes. Yep. Morbing on about what we're owed. Oh, wait, was there a yellow dot to the upper left? Yes. Uh, there we slit. are. Ooh, it looks like a bunker. There's a slit in the concrete here. A sewer? The light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. What's in there? Maybe it's just a storm drain for the sewer? Kim, any idea what's down there? No idea. He takes his glasses off to polish. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. Think we might find Ruby down there? We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Ravishal's sewage system has been built and rebuilt four times now. Hey, hey. Sorry, I just need to grab the PS3 and uh, I'm like, <coughs> You are unminded. Okay, I'm a he, ghost. He puts his glasses back on in conclusion. She could be under any building, but not in here. He looks into the slit and sighs. I hope not. Ho! Oh! <laughs> There's no echo and no answer. There's so much coast. Ooh. Oh! A kick drum pulse. The music is coming from somewhere on the ice. Little fishies. <gasps> a drawbridge. It can only be lowered from the other side. Full of holes. Could the posts hide treasure? Look inside. Oh man, treasure posts. These posts are all terrible. <laughs> That's my favorite image macro. <laughs> I don't know what the context is, but it always showed up on the old forums. And it was just this police officer. Uh flooded up to his chest in a field, gesturing at a bunch of fence posts with this expression on his face that was... Yep. And the caption was, these posts are all terrible. It made me very happy. Or these are all terrible posts? Yeah. What are you? Hello. Hello. This is awfully close. You're a close talker. A shaggy looking girl in her late teens, early twenties kneels on the ice with an electronic contraption in her hand. Hearing you approach, she looks up. Oh, hello there. It's cold out here, but she's not wearing a hat. She must be freezing. Everyone knows drugs make you invulnerable to cold. You know this one likes, you bet this one likes to party. Dear child, it's freezing. Where's your hat? Huh? <laughs> Maybe she didn't hear you a little louder. I said you should have a hat on. Come to think of it, I should. You're right. I don't know. Some kind of store? Maybe a general store. Look, man, fuck the hat. Mmm, red check. Is that really necessary? I'm sorry, I said fuck the hat. I was concentrating on something else. <laughs> Such a bad conversation to be having. We're so bad. What's your name? A cell. Her hair is dyed blonde with dark roots showing there's a coarseness to her features, some masculinity below that timidness. 
I'm not a young suitor. This is official police business. Okay, well, it's Berger. Very common name. What's that device you've got there? This? She breathes on her freezing fingers. It's a portable recording device. It's for field recording. Low quality, but still. And the wires? Actually, just one wire. I picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to a contact microphone. What's a contact microphone? A contact mic records sounds from inside things, like this ice. Nice. You can maybe bug someone with it. Wiretapping. Uh, I have some non-mic questions for you. Okay. What are you doing out here? Recording, I guess. And what it is, was it? What is it that you're recording? I think I'm recording cracks in the ice, but there's no way to tell. Not without headphones. I think I just recorded your footsteps too. Not sure how it will sound. She scratches her forehead. And what happened to your headphones? My boyfriend sold them. What for? I don't know, man. Things, just stuff you need for life. Everything checks out, sir. And these recordings, what are they for? The musicians in the Palisium make them, use them for making music. They loop the stuff, cutting the tapes together, make music out of cracks in the ice and keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's hard to explain. Anyway, I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be like a music place anyway. She rubs her shoulders and looks around. I don't really know what I'm doing here. They use synthesizers too. I don't have a synthesizer. She looks at the recording device, the thing she thought would fill her hours with joy and escape. It's turning out to be an empty fantasy. She feels childish, very useless all of a sudden. Take this, you're cold. The lieutenant begins to take off his jacket. No, man. Fuck that. I'm cool. Sorry I said that. I'm sorry about the fuck. It's okay. The lieutenant backs up. He throws you a glance. You said this is supposed it's supposed to be a music place. What is? That, she points towards the church. The boys think it could be a place, like the Palisium or something. Stupid. It's really she pauses. Not gonna be a Palisium, that's for sure. The boys? Yeah, Andre and the guys. They're inside in the tent. Why is that? Why are you freezing out here while the boys are inside? I've got too much stuff crammed in there. No room. Stuff like what? Music stuff mostly, like this tape recorder, but bigger. There's piles of it. Why not just leave some of it outside so you don't have to freeze? That stuff is more expensive than I am. More expensive than any of us, really. Doesn't matter. I can take the cold. Now this is where a hat would come in handy. Yeah, maybe you were right about the hat. Have you seen a red-haired woman around? No. Just no? It's pretty desolate here. I only hear the dogs bark at night and see shadows move down the coast. That's good. No neighbors to complain about noise when you get the club going. Exactly. It's our chance to turn the grim desolation into an overwhelmingly fun dance party. Tell me more about this music place you've been planning in the church. It's supposed to become like a club for anodic dance music. Like that new style of synthesizer stuff they play at the Palisium. Except that, yeah, she looks down the old wooden church up the poles. As the mean wind comes bellowing in, six-story structure lets out a doleful shriek. What is anodic dance music? You know, anodic, cathodic music that's made with electronic instruments. Got it. Now about the church. What do you need to know? So you want to turn it into a club? I know. She nods towards the sloping mass of wood on the coast and shivers. It's not my idea. Andre and the boys found the place. It's supposed to be deserted, but now they can't even take it. You don't get me wrong, but you're cops, right? No, we're the police. Yeah, why do you ask? Okay, well, she hesitates. Maybe you could talk to Andre and the guys. Because there's some strange things going on in that church. If you're police, you should look into it, right? I'll talk to them. Inside that thing there, she points to the tent. It would be cool if you did. Something else? The tape recorder lies on the ice like a discarded toy. Nope. Fumbled! <laughs> Empathy, huh? Shall we put on our empathy clothing? Sure. And we'll have to we'll have to boost it. Yeah. Stats, but 
and maybe do drugs? Maybe Speed? do drugs. Or is that booze? We might have to be drunk to talk to her. <laughs> also put on, put on a hat, because then we can give her a hat. Oh, yeah. The bum hat looks warm. Yeah. I want to pass this chat. And empathy, more empathy is probably good. Yeah. Right? Like, we're not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Only one. And then, if we fail again, we can... Ah! Ah! Uh, what are you doing out the cold? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. I guess upgrade empathy. Oh, it looked at the end. Oh. Come on! All right, uh, we should also booze up, I think. Okay. Like, uh, it's a tool. A tool, my bad. No, that's physique. So maybe yeah. it's the. Yeah, wait, it's like, no. yeah, yeah. Psyche? It's yeah. Yeah. Yes. The anti radiation drugs. Oh, electrochemistry wants something. Whoa, in your hand, perholodon, the double rainbow of synthetic hallucinations, rare and gritty, a product of the age of atomic power. Look at the little puck of liquid. What a funny little cap. Don't let the scary medical warnings throw you off. It's an inadequate antidote to radiation poisoning, but a potent antidote to boredom. Wait, radiation poisoning sounds scary. It's not going to give you radiation poisoning, stupid. Here, hold it on is a perfect match for a badass junkie cop who's looking for a little heat. Open the cap. The container is warm to the touch, or is that just the anticipation? You screw the lid open and look. A little slit on the side lets you just slurp it up like an oyster. Come on, slurp it up. Won't Kim see me slurp? What is he, your mother? Is Kim your au pair? Slurp it. Slurp a little morsel of danger joy. Okay, but only a little. <laughs> Stealthy. Yeah. Tastes like an anti-radiation drug. Tastes like many things all melting into one confl conflagration in the back of your throat. As you look around, the world slowly exists as it did before. Only now, gentle flames lick at its edges as though it were a photo burning. Really? No, of course not really. It's just a metaphor. The effect of that otherworldly drop of liquid is slower and more subtle than that of real flames, yet just as warm. This is warmth. It makes you want to share your discovery with Kim. <laughs> this is going to be so useful in my line of work. Yeah! Already you can tell you're going to be slurping a lot more pure hold it on. This stuff is going to give you insight into that little flickering light hidden in all human beings. In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a pyro button. It gives plus one to psyche skills. I think we still have to yeah, boost level our up. empathy. Yeah. All right. I don't know why I'm doing this. Why am I taking her microphone? The device is still warm from her touch and heavy as a brick from the batteries inside. The company logo Omicron adores its yellow plastic cover. Inside the tape is rolling. The girl looks at the device in your hands. At any age in this weather waiting for it to get dark. She looks you in the eye, her pupils wide, surrounded by a ridiculous amount of makeup. The people who built this world intended it to be better for you, but they failed. It is easier to live in their failure with this by your side. It's real. Tell her. It is not a childish fantasy. It can be a real weapon against what's coming for you now. Nothing if you got this. Don't be scared. Stick to it, kid. 
Something changes between you two. She looks at you differently now as an equal, a fellow human being. What's eating you, officer? Eating me? There's nothing eating me. Come on, I can tell. She shakes her head slowly, but okay. Be a boy Darrow about it if you want to. I guess there's something that's been making my life hell. What is it? People just keep putting their selfish interests ahead of the greater good. I suppose I could be moral, couldn't I? Or racist, you know. Yeah, or racist, or a capitalist, or the communist. We are a communist. <laughs> we are a communist. <laughs> All of these posts are terrible. Oh, really? Yeah, no one understands that sometimes you've got to make sacrifices for the sake of progress. It's all very distress. This is awful! So the thing that's been eating you is the slow pace of social progress. No, that's probably not it, actually. No, it sounds like you've got a chick issue. Now that you mention it, I found these letters I'd thrown in the trash. They might have something to do with it. Okay, why do you think that is? Now they're written in a woman's hand, and oh boy did reading them make me feel not good. There you have it then. Chick trouble. Not political after all. Who was she? I don't remember. Really? She appears to believe you. You seem pretty upset about this chica. Are you sure you don't remember anything about her? I remember her scent, and that's all. Wow, man, that's some pretty strange shit. She rubs her sides for warmth. You sure the letters were for you? Why would I have reacted so strongly otherwise? How come you don't remember, though? Is it like some selective memory thing? What do you, you might, what do you mean by selective memory? Man, when I get hurt, I just want to forget that shit, you know? That kind of selective memory. You might have a point there. Selective memory. Yeah, or it might just be psych bullshit, you know? Konigstein wank. What is this Konigstein wank? You know, the psych thing they've got going on there. Rich people like it. People in Konigstein think are mostly rich. Thanks for this bullshit the psych thing, then. You're welcome. She thinks for a second, stretching her jaw. Might be for the best to keep that shit forgotten, though. Just my opinion. If it itches, don't scratch. Yes, but it itches really, really bad. Well, goodbye! <laughs> It's not only your eardrums that register sound anymore, your very skin has become an organ of hearing, looking for a whisper light and low, a god who's very, very silent, nothing escapes you, a cockroach in the other room, a candy wrapper falling on dry grass, a drunk falling from a chair in a bar 20 meters away. In fact, you haven't heard the cold de mama d'aqua, but you have discovered that you have amazing hearing. It must be the only part of you the alcohol hasn't drowned out. Keep listening. Plus three to perception. Not bad. Heck yeah. Oof. We have superpowers. Minus two to encyclopedia though. We're stupid. <laughs> we're quite stupid. That's fine. We were stupid already. Hmm. Want to go in the tent? Yeah, let's go in the tent. Let's see what these kids are up to. We should probably put away our drugs. They probably won't see anything. We were so ultra stealthy though when we did drugs right in front of Kim. <laughs> Push that thing over. Yeah. Yeah. Smash the state. What is this? It looks like a makeshift bridge. He adjusts his collar against a cool breeze. 
Could be convenient. <laughs> All right, kids, it's the police. Open up in there. The tent is just a tarpaulin fabric covering a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside, three young men are listening to some new form of music. It's like nothing you've ever heard. One of them looks at you. Get in the clothes of fat behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. It's safe to assume this is their leader, or at least he thinks there is. Sorry, you barely have room for one. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I keep watching. Mmm, ether. You see a youngest ma man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hello, Andre. young man with earrings looks at you suspiciously. An egghead. Egg! The tape player high above his head continues to blast what is probably a notic music. Together with a cell burger, who's out there right now, doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organizers. How many music venues have you organized? Pipeline, officer. Why are you so, here? We've been all over Jamrock North, prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue. All the for talent. Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate bar. Place is a shithole. I, I apologize for my friend Lloyd's potty mouth. I realize this is not how you speak to a police officer. I he has authority issues. Was there something you wanted? Your friend Assel said there was a problem with the church. Ah, oh, so you've met her. Good, good. He's not as glad as he would like you to think. There is concern in his yeah. voice. It's a matter of occupied ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Malcomania on the coast. An attempt to pander to your perceived conservative sensibilities. No person at age would, his age would ever use a word like narcomania with a straight face. Don't fall for it. Enough histrionics! What are you talking about? I'm about the church, and I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dope heads and burnouts if left unattended. Dope heads! <laughs> Hardcore! Burnout. Well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin Hayes on the map for one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that, in Revershaw. Strike that, the world! And sadder yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up, you know, are the worst kind. He leans back a little, watching you with steady, serious gaze, letting you imagine just how bad those dope heads and burnouts really are. Good. This calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. I feel like you may be laying this on a bit thick. What's really so bad about these dope heads and burnouts? They're spooky. What exactly do you mean by spooky? I was hoping you'd be the judge of that, officer. All I can say is the spookiness kind of keeps us from restoring this church into a community center and a place of spiritual refuge. Also, they don't eat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. People just want to spin tapes without them spooking it up. Place is bad signs. No one can dance like that. Thank you. Thank you, Egghead. So you're gonna look into it, right? This should be a police matter. Getting them out, whatever spooky stuff they're doing. I'm sure it's not what the Ecclesiastes meant their property for. I'll look into it. Andre is obviously very happy you took him seriously. The whole tent is. The boys exchange giddy looks. Truth is, I don't really know. None of us do. We don't even know how many there are. All we've seen are glimpses. You haven't seen them and you want the police involved. Well, there's also the machinery. This machinery is of deeply mystical variety. When I first scoured the place back in February, it was abandoned, empty. It took some time getting a crew together, so now... 
So about two weeks ago, we came up here hoping to set the stuff up. Suddenly, there was all these strange machines lying about in there. One of them has wires running into bowls of water. Wires into water. Never seen anything like it. Andre, tell them about the feeling. Oh, a feeling like there was something in there with us watching us from the dive. No, the other one. Uh, which other one? Not as in tune with my emotions as you are, Egg. Felt like silence. Awful silence. For this man, even regular silence is awful enough, but what... What that, but that was something greater. We haven't physically seen anyone. No, exactly. We've just seen someone who think, think it's a woman go in and out of the church a couple of times. We felt someone or something eyeing us inside, but that's kind of it. Woman with red hair? Sure, why not? Yeah. But not really, the other one adds. Brown hair, old, heavy, dark signs. So which is it? What Noid said. Uh, so brown and old, or Ruby might have dyed her hair, though it seems like a stretch at this point. Something watching you? Like, you aren't alone, you know? You're walking quite human, if you know what I mean. It was this dark shape climbing upside down along the ceiling, like some kind of crab man. A crab man? Yeah, you know, the way it was climbing up and around the ceiling, like a crab. The other one agrees. It was stalking a cell, establishing ambush behavior. Okay, ambush behavior. Crab, crab man. 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 Yeah, totally. I mean, I didn't personally see it. Cell was alone that time, but I believe her. If she comes out, if she comes out running and says there's a crab in there, there's a crab in there. You should ask her about it, but be nice. Don't tell her you don't believe in the crab. The implications of this are too numerous to consider. Proceed with caution. Learn all you can before entering that dark building. There's probably no crab man. <laughs> don't let them draw you in with this nonsense. Uh, machi machinery. You should talk to Noid about that. I just got a distinct burnout and dopehead sign from them. Probably jacked up on some snuff station too. Probably, very likely. How can you be sure? Well, honestly, I can't, but I am. Why not? Let's go with that. I don't see a single thing wrong with that argument. I'm 70% sure they're substance abusers. Don't let the technology fool you. He makes little quotation marks with his finger when he says technology. Oh, all right, let's talk about something else. Uh, pfft. tell me about your gear. Uh, see, so you brought your own water. Hmm. And it's distilled too. Oh? Doesn't know what to say. It's the one they sell at the fuel station. What's with all the Nozafed? What now? The Nozafed Ultra. You have a lot of it lying around. Oh, the old Ultra. We, uh, have a major sinus infection. Oh, okay, sure, that makes sense. <laughs> Can I have some? <laughs> there you go, officer. The Noza, blast away. I get the Noza fed, but what about the engine starting fluid? It's for starting engines. How's that extra high ether content working out for you? Does it do the trick? You're not completely satisfied yet. What is ethyl ether anyway? No idea, man. <laughs> Come on, I just want some ether. <laughs> not yet. Hmm. Logic. That's it for now. Oh! Gonna be way cool. Straight in the Almost eye. Almost died. Straight in the eye. Oh. in the looking ball. God damn, asshole. Man, I'm super sorry. That was totally my bad. I got overexcited. Threw them too hard. I'm sorry. He looks like he's genuinely sorry he didn't throw them better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He almost I murdered me, a cop. That's use of lethal force. I'm I'm really sorry, man. Just take this, okay? He pulls out some black paper from his belt pack. Wow, looks like there's quite a lot in there. <laughs> I don't need your fucking pity money. Well, I'll take the money, absolutely. Thank you. Ooh, 25. I hope that settles it. Oh, wait, the key. Oh, wait, we were supposed to ask Noid about something. 
And now you want to discuss things with Noid? Good. It's good you talked to Andre first. Gave me time to get a reading on your side. Can't really talk to people before you get a reading. Weird stuff. Specialized. There was a data processor and some sort of long wave machinery. Wires going into water. Gives off a spy sign or some fucked up Samaritan science sign. You know, the kind that goes head first into the supernatural. Most of it doesn't exist, but there's also stuff that isn't allowed to exist because the moralist thinks it's too dangerous for the plebs. Sonic powers, pale related diseases, pretenders pretending to be human folk rights, that kind of stuff. Oh, cool. Bye. Egghead. Oh, Egghead. Yeah. Dude, this guy's got, like, energy. The young man with peroxide blonde hair holds up a Harmon Washi tape player nodding along to the music. As though you're supposed to be sharing some kind of tremendous evangelical secret. Hardcore. Is it? It's hardcore. I don't know what to say to that. Please give a danger. I am the rearranger. Your cop training did not prepare for you for this. What to do? Could there have been a right way out of this garden of forking paths, you think? So um... This is hardcore. Hardcore! Hardcore to the mega. Internally coherent. <laughs> all core. All right. Yeah. Hardcore. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> it is. What is it? I mean, really. Feels like you should reply with a very pinnacle of idiocy here so that things get totally transcendent. But you haven't gotten there yet, so you don't know what to say. I was thinking that too! <laughs> I am the Mike Enforcer. I am the Chick's Checker. Yeah! Well, goodbye! So, in preparation for spring break, mm -hmm. I was like, my character probably goes to raves. Right. I wonder what kind of music people would listen to. So I was like on iTunes and I grabbed some Prodigy and I was like, genius, make me some stuff. Right. And then it turns out there's a lot of scooter in my library from other people. Mm -hmm. So it started playing a lot of scooter music. And then the line like, skibbity skibba danger, I'm the rear ranger came up and I was right. like, that's memorable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This game. So that's from a song called Maria, I Like It Loud. And there's other lines in there from Posse, I Need You on the Floor. Huh. And they even have a track called Call Me Manana. So oh, really? So just like all manner of scooter references here. Neat. But I still, I don't quite know how to get through. There's another song called The Question, What is the Question? And okay. there's another one called How Much is the Fish? That also is referenced. Can I talk to my so. <laughs> Are you going to help us? The church, I mean. Great. Let us know if there's any progress, will ya? We've been waiting for weeks here. Uh. Oh, you're not gonna believe me. There's no point in me telling you. Well, why don't you go ahead? I was kind of hoping that, like, if we had the the law jaw uh, thought. Mm-hmm. Because the line after "I'm the Mike Enforcer, I'm the Chicks Checker" is "I'm the law." Oh, really? Yeah, in the song. Oh, okay. And I'm like, oh, I wonder. But I don't know. I, I have to yeah. run through the game again. I went in and saw one next to one of those machines there. Hmm. Man, crawled down the wall, upside down like a crab, down the church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. Stopped right before he got to the floor, then just hung there like that, looking at me, right at me. Fucking turned around, walked out. End of story. Like a crab, you say, Lieutenant. The Lieutenant's nod. His face is stone. What did this crab man look like? It was too dark. Couldn't tell exactly. No, I do believe you. Why? It seems too ludicrous for a lie. I guess so. Anyways, what else? 
I'd like to learn, know more about your associates. My associates? She blows on her cold fingers. Haven't got much to say about them. You must know something. Of course I do. I just don't tell people about my friends, who they are, and so on. I don't provide information on them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Want to go in the church? Yeah. Is that money? It, it is. is! A buck five. Woo. A buck oh five. That's what freedom costs. We didn't look at these posts. Yeah. Show some hustle, Harry. All right, zoom in. Let's get a good view on these posts. There's a lot of them. <gasps> There's so much money here. Why is there money here? Why is there money anywhere? There's so many drugs. We should probably, like, up our health before going into battle with the Crab Man. There's always, after you take a hit, there's always time to uh, heal during oh, the, okay. the, the time it goes down. Mm. So, as far as I know, you only take, like, one hit at a time. Okay. We, we will probably live through our encounter with the Crab Man. Will we, though? Hmm. Inspect the padlock. It'll be easier to break the staple than the lock. Also, that sticker is interesting somehow. Look at the sticker! You see a yellow s circle with two X's and a big curve below them. It looks like a mouth. You're pretty sure you haven't seen it before. What that symbol depicts is clear enough. A smiling dead guy. The curve makes it smile and the X's make it dead. There's something blindingly modern about this symbol. And its, it's modernness puts to shame everything you've seen before. What makes it modern? It's the contrast between the cherry chemical yellow and the rigor mortis, as if the cherry guy didn't know he was dead, or the dead guy didn't care that he was. Either way, you get the sense that the forces of the future are at work here. These forces of future have chosen to depict something that reminds you of you. He takes off his glasses and uses a blue handkerchief to thoroughly wipe them clean before inspecting the sticker. Then he looks up, pauses, and replies, No. What does it look like to you? Looks like a dead man smiling. Suggests junior delinquency. What is suggestive of junior delinquency here? I haven't seen that sticker before, and I am not a youth. The level of conceptual thinking is not part of my skill set. Yeah! There's nothing like the sound of a sticker unpeeling. Now it's stuck to your thumb. Does it belong with the case, or does it belong on your ledger? It's about me, isn't it? I it's think not so. about the case. I think so. Well, wow. looks very modern. You're part of the Future Brigade now, and so is your formerly humdrum ledger. Neon, baby! Ha-cha-cha! The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. The great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church as though rushing to fill a great vacuum in the heart of the city. Holy shit! I too would like to party here! A strange stillness fills you as you look ahead. 
You should walk here, not run. Running won't hurt you. Okay. Someone has tried to carve one of the beams. Ooh, I like the parquet floor. Mm-hmm. That is parquet, isn't it? I think that's the word for that. Hmm. These are the cryptozoologists, aren't they? No. No. Another radio computer, says the left hand, stepping closer, and this time it's already turned on. He seems cautious around the machine. These machines sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> These machines sometimes harbor traps, he thinks, alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Let, let me just... Let me look. You see the fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You are free to proceed. Cube-like crisscross of filament, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. A silver tape on the side says in a black marker, Log, February through March. This is the machine's filament memory. Press play to see its contents. The speaker comes to life, static, seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good afternoon. Fortress accident on St. Brune. This is Eason Salendi in Repeater Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? It's the same old woman who you spoke, you spoke with through the radio computer in the doomed commercial area. Tape on the inside says log February to March. Good. Please repeat the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. I don't know the password. Ugh. Goodbye! Goodbye, fortress accident. Press print. Nothing happens. Gamers. <gasps> Shoes! Yeah, right? Shoes! Oh my god. Shoes. Ermagerd. Oh! <gasps> Oh, red bro, empathy shoes. Empathy shoes. Yeah, they're on the top row where they belong. In someone else's shoes. Oh. I owe myself a new pair of shoes. I feel. Hmm. Now there's a look. That is a look. That is a look. That's kind of a look. Also a look. Of <laughs> Technically a, a look. Kind. I we look like Captain Haddock. Now we just look like a butler of some kind. I Luster and barnacles. <laughs> Billions of blue blistering barnacles. Although maybe we should be wearing perception here. Ah. Do we have any other perception gear? No. But also our perception is like godlike, so. 
fair. We are a noticer cop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Scarf? It is. don't cry <laughs> but our tie our hideous tie yeah where would we be without our hideous tie all right all right let's let's move into this next room and then see if we can that's not that... an entrance hmm it's not an entrance oh it's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Wait a second. What's happening? Can you hear anything? I've never experienced anything like this. His detached tone conceals how uncomfortable he is. Lieutenant doesn't reply, but you sense him tense up next to you. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. It's like there's something moving up there. A shadow has emerged from the tower and is making its way toward you through all the others. All of the shadow's movements. It's not a shadow anymore, becoming more substantial as it gets closer. The shape of an animal descends. Officer, is there something up there? The lieutenant follows your gaze, attempting to see whatever it is you are seeing. On the ceiling? Tiago. Hello. The shadow is a man, but a man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. He is studying you intently. A crab man! I bet your alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, home. But don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right. You've come to the right place. The right place for what? You can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of the bottle. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? I'm put off by this religious stuff, he thinks. And maybe the ceiling climbing, too. It's all very hard to square with the lieutenant's own view of reality. Hey. And what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off already. Sheesh. Now, I guess I have had a bit of a problem, and I've been getting out of hand lately, but... Kudu, eh? I see deep inside you. Your body and spirit are suffering greatly from overindulgence, and you don't even know it. How do you know what I'm feeling? Hey, I'm very in touch with my suffering. I was like you once. You don't know all the havoc Evino is wreaking on your mind and your spirit. Necesitas parar, Romy. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. For some reason, I feel like you have a no, point trust there. Me. Trust me, all. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. This is the Church of the Mother of Silence. 
You are welcome here. This mother of silence sounds like a serious player. You might want to be careful until you find out what you're dealing with. You know where the other spooker is? Other spooker? Oh, esto vietia muy estudiosa. He laughs. Don't know, Holmes. Is there another person living in this church? And it is a... Viaita? No, I just call her Viaita because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. He scratches his head. Or maybe not that young. Age is just one of the many masks we wear. Wait, what if it's Ruby? Lieutenant seems to be thinking the same. He takes out his little notebook. Did it ever seem to you like she was hiding here from something? You mean like a fugitive? He glances at the abandoned radio computer on the other side of the nave, pulsing with light. Then he shakes his head. No, man, quite the opposite. I don't know. I don't think she cares much about authority or anything for that matter. Maybe only about her machines. I see. The lieutenant seems content with that answer. And where is she now? I told you, Holmes. I don't know. Well, see if I can find her some other way. You just have to wait till she comes back, or... He shrugs, or search through her radio computer. Have you heard her say the password? Too many times I say, you need it for something? I need to overdo it. We won't mind sharing it with you. Ask for first degree murder investigation in Martinez. Don't sweat it, Vato. The password is life after death. That is true, but what comes after death? What do you think of that? Makes me almost pity La Nea Lista Pequena when I hear it. Some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. One's in the tent outside, right? I've seen them. They think they're scared of me. Do they have a reason to be scared? No, man, they look pretty funny, and I don't harm no one anymore anyway. What do you think about the nightclub? Why not? It wouldn't bother me none. I'm actually, I'm usually way up there imbibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Might even be nice to have some company. He said that in spite of himself. He's more attached to the human than he'd like to think. You must be the crab man. It's if your neighbor. You're, hmm? If you're not a crab, what are you? <laughs> I always thought of myself more like a flame flickering along the rafters and beams. He pauses. It may be that I got to work on my technique. What were you before you became a crab man? I was in a gangway, but my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. He frowns. That's not really the point I say. You gotta give yourself over to the service. Service of the mother, that is. Do you remember your name, sir? Diego is my name, but those syllables don't mean much to me these days. A name isn't just your identity, but also, so to speak, your place among your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. My name's Harry. That's just the thing, Holmes. None of that matters. This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there, a way out into nothingness. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. I circle it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'll be pure enough to go drink from it directly. Are these yours? I think they were a long time ago. I had to shed them like skins to get closer to the center of the silence. You can have them. I don't need them anymore. This is cool. <laughs> oh, that's no simple question. I say she is one who can't be painted or sculpted. She has a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me, but I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes, and no one ever will. What will happen once you drink for this perf from this perforation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally, at one with the state of the world before reality began. How did you even find this place? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here back when I still had material worries. Up, hit, up there, I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, why it didn't belong to me. Why was the church abandoned? Police raid a while back, he responds, his voice suddenly flat. Did you witness it? Not really, or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget everything. Okay, thanks. 
That was an interesting conversation. However, I'm not sure whether we'll find our suspect here. We should probably, like... Yep. We're chill gonna here. have to stop. Yeah. But yeah. God, I love this game. <laughs> And you know what else we love? Subs. True. Thank you, Tikosh, for 17 months. Almost missed the stream. Let's continue being a sorry communist cop. We did. Yeah. Ghost user 1984 has come back for the 12th month. Happy one year. One year. E block cheer with 500 bits. It's worrying, especially considering his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a Mazovian socioeconomist. He wants to liquidate the ruling class, which, again, for a police officer, is a little odd. Yeah, we're here to protect property, aren't we? That's usually a cop's job. What if we just let some ravers into a church? What At least something useful will happen there. Yeah. Miyazushi has reset for the 37th month. Thank you. And the Freakazoid has been here for five months. Thank you. Ghost Valve came back for the 21st month. Burps for the Burp God. And Teisukara Sakura is a new subscriber gifted by an anonymous gifter. Excalibur Crusade has come back for the sixth month. You earned this. You know what you did. Oh, Top Hat Spider, a new subscriber. Welcome. Ken Copen has come back for the ninth month. Nowhere else I'd rather have a sub baby than the talking simulator. Thank you. Corpse Poncho, sub for 18 months. That's like two sub babies. It is. Fizzlebolt came back for the seventh month. Witty and thought-provoking zinger about subbing for seven months here. Ha-cha! Cha-cha-cha. Eternal Density, 29 months. Don't tell Dale. Mm. We won't. Dale will remain blissfully ignorant. Mm-hmm. So, assuming that everything goes well with the PS3, Ben will be in here later playing Silent Hill. Yeah. With Adam. Like Silent Hill, is it zero? Is it the first one? The it's remake? It's the worst first one, I think. Okay. It might be, it might be some sort of remake. Some form of uh, HD mm. remaster. I don't know. Nifty. I believe this will be Adam's first time residenting or eviling. Silenting Hill. Silenting Hill. Yeah. Fogtown McPyramid Head, I believe. Right. Those are different properties. Entirely different properties, Cameron. I'm a video game professional. Uh, and then they're doing other things on other days. We are. Let's see. I know on Thursday we'll be back with more Gloomhaven. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, watch and plays tomorrow. Tomorrow's Ooh. garbage day. Everyone remember to put out your trash. Then they're playing Discover Lands Unknown. Mm hmm. On the AFC checkpoint. Lurmch. Mm-hmm. And yeah. More Gloomhaven. Gloom. Gloomhaven. We, we're set up. We, we've got 100% victory so far. We are acing this test. Yeah. Hardest game ever. More like easy game, easy life. Oh, and then they're doing it. It's Valentine's Day. Right. Yeah. We have a double date uh, two-headed giant coming up. Valentine's. Perfona. Oh, and oh. Uh, Texan Reverend's going to be in town. Making some reverb some speakers, panels. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe Heather and I will, will be uh, helping out with that. Dope. Yeah, so that's the coming week. So stick around for more quality. Yeah, do that. We will see you all in the future. Farewell.